Welcome back. Let's uh, put things in perspective. Uh, we have been talking about uh, uh, classical statistical mechanics, basically the formalism that is required to treat systems uh, classically. And we have uh, looked at a number of examples, starting with uh, a classical ideal gas, uh, collection of spins in a magnetic field or uh, there are these harmonic oscillators which actually make up a, a nice model for solids which give you right uh, uh, kind of specific heat. Though we have not seen that yet, uh, we have done some calculations on that. Whatever uh, has been uh, discussed so far, they all are uh, on the presumption that the temperature is high and we are really in the classical domain when the thermal fluctuations dominate over the quantum energy scales. And um, we are coming slowly close to that and uh, we will be uh, taking on quantum stat make from uh, next class onwards. But let us um, first do some uh, examples of the ca grand canonical ensemble and uh, then we will uh, go on to discuss uh, applications of that and uh, talk about photon gas, uh, talk about its equipartition theorem um, and virial theorem and uh, we will do some problems on entropy and canonical distribution. Then we will do mixing of gases which uh, gives rise to a paradox uh, which is known as Gibbs paradox and this uh, needs to be resolved and uh, we will uh, sort of see all of them one after another. So, we have been doing uh, grand canonical ensemble and how does it differ from the canonical ensemble? We have said that number of particles is not a measurable quantity. So, let us uh, relax the condition that uh, the members of the ensemble cannot exchange number of particles. So, in addition to energy, they also exchange the number of particles and um, in this process they would come to an equilibrium temperature T and an equilibrium chemical potential mu. So, this is the uh, idea of grand canonical ensemble and we have uh, written down uh, the partition function of that in the last class which is equal to. Um, so, uh, there is a summation over say R and S, we are uh, knowingly uh, intentionally we are using these two um, indices for uh, to differentiate between uh, the uh, particle number index and the energy index and this is uh, equal to an exponential minus alpha nr minus beta es. So, this is what was uh, written down earlier and uh, alpha and beta were identified as mu over kt and uh, beta is 1 over kt. So, this is the definition of the grand canonical partition function. So, and uh, to distinguish it from the canonical partition function, we write it with a capital G, G stands for grand canonical. And um, if you uh, do a little more uh, simplification of that, this really looks like uh, it is equal to sum over n r equal to 0 to infinity and uh, there is an exponential beta mu um, n r that is the first term and this uh, then it is s exponential minus beta e s. So, I just factorize the uh, well, uh, let me write this bracket here and a bracket here and so on. Uh, so, we just factorize this uh, exponential and write it in this form, but this gives us a nice um, handle over it where we can write it as uh, some n r equal to 0 to infinity exponential. Uh, so, we will write this exponential beta mu as a quantity called as z f, z f to the power n r and then is the same canonical uh, partition function which is at a given uh, t and n or you can write it as a beta and n. Okay? So, uh, this part is the canonical partition function which we have seen earlier and this part is written as a z f to the power n and this z f is called as the fugacity.
fugacity of the system and this is equal to exponential beta mu. We will use this fugacity extensively when we talk about Bose-Einstein condensates and so on. So, right now uh, the canonical partition function nicely factorizes into a sum over the number of particles which is n r going from 0 to infinity and also the canonical part that we have dealt uh, before. So, uh, then this z g uh, can be uh, also written as um, I mean uh, it is this step itself it is equal to sum over n r um, exponential uh, beta mu n r plus a log of z uh, well I mean in the sense that you can uh, uh, let us not. So, we can also write it as log of z and, um, and there is a sum over n r from 0 to infinity. There are various ways of writing the grand canonical partition function. But what our idea is that um, if we can find out the canonical partition function which we have seen in a number of cases how to calculate that then uh, getting the grand canonical is not um, uh, that difficult. Okay. So, uh, because uh, this uh, partition function z g can be uh, represented in terms of the canonical partition function. Okay. Now, let me remind you that the distribution that we are talking about is indeed a sharp distribution which is peaked at some uh, you know uh, value of energy and a value of number of particle. So, this sum over n r from 0 to infinity um, can be replaced by this sum can be replaced by uh, the largest term in the sum. And this is possible because we know that we are dealing uh, very close to the micro canonical distribution which uh, talks about a particular uh, number of particles and particular energy. And uh, here uh, also that um, you know, we are just talking about if this grand canonical is uh, very close to uh, the micro canonical then we should be talking about uh, the distribution peaking at some uh, number of particles and uh, so this can be replaced this sum can be replaced by the largest term in the sum. So, what I mean is that if you have uh, terms uh, which are very small, so a large number of terms which are like uh, these are very small number of terms and then something very large. So, the sum is dominated by this large term. So, uh, in that spirit we can write down this z g as uh, nothing but it is equal to exponential. Now, this sum goes away and we have a minus beta uh, and we have a minus k log z uh, and a minus mu n and so now my uh, sum goes away and we have taken that this is the largest term in the sum. Okay. So, now this quantity is called as a grand potential. So, phi is called as the grand potential. Which is in line with uh, this uh, Helmholtz free energy because you have seen that uh, this is actually uh, you take the log of the partition function and you get it as um, uh, the free energy the Helmholtz free energy. So, this is equal to e to the power minus beta phi and that is a, a sort of form of the grand canonical partition function. So, uh, what is it good at? It is sort of uh, good at a number of things that is we can get the free energies. So, we write this phi as uh, which is a function of T v and mu remember that uh, it is not a function of n anymore because n is not constant. So, this is equal to f t v n minus of mu n uh, which is nothing but equal to minus p v. So, you see that here uh, 
it is uh, this k log z and there is a multiplied by a beta that will give you uh, this f and then f will and f minus mu n gives you the uh, grand potential. So, uh, this is equal to nothing but equal to, so I will still write uh, these dependencies explicitly. So, this is equal to minus k t log of z g uh, and this is a t v mu and uh, in a continuum notation of course, you have a z g this is equal to h to the power 3 n uh, n factorial and a d uh, cube 3 n q d cube 3 n p and e to the power minus beta. Now, h minus mu n is what you have to consider. So, h is the Hamiltonian of the system. And now, instead of the Hamiltonian, you have to take the h minus mu n uh, because of this uh, partners uh, families of the ensembles being able to uh, exchange the number of particles there. Okay. So, um, and from there uh, you can again get this uh, various quantities such as entropy here is equal to minus del phi del t at a given v mu. Uh, remember s was minus del f del t uh, at a v n, now it is a v mu at a constant v mu. Pressure is again given by minus del phi uh, del v t mu and uh, the number of particles is given by del phi uh, del mu and t v. Okay. So, these are uh, the thermodynamic quantities that you can obtain from the uh, grand canonical partition function. And these are, as you know, the, these are useful for uh, deriving various things, including the uh, the equation of state and uh, various other physical things, such as uh, magnetization, such as uh, susceptibility, or such as specific heat, and so on and so forth. Okay, so uh, this is uh, where we stand at this moment, and uh, we can also, you know, uh, extend this and calculate the fluctuations in the number of particles. I mean fluctuation in energy um, and so on and then uh, we can use this as z g. Um, we can write it in terms of beta and uh, that is T n uh, n or mu, but we can also write it in terms of the fugacity which is uh, which contains beta mu. So, this is equal to uh, uh, nothing but this n r equal to 0 to infinity we go back to our uh, summation and this and this is equal to uh, n r equal to 0 to infinity and uh, z f uh, to the power n r and we have a canonical partition function which is given by T n or beta n. So, average energy uh, can be expressed as 1 over j z g which is the normalization factor and E s uh, z f to the power n r and um, exponential minus beta E s I write it explicitly here and um, this is nothing but uh, minus of del del beta log of z g and uh, you have a uh, uh, beta and z f. Okay. This was exactly the same relation as we have seen earlier, um, excepting that the uh, number of uh, or the fluctuation in energy was uh, simply minus del del beta of uh, log of z, where z was a canonical partition function. Now, we write it in terms of the uh, grand canonical partition function. So, uh, let us look at the, uh, the fluctuation in the number of particles.
and this is again that nr uh, or rather we are finding out so it's a fluctuation of energy uh, what i mean is that then you can calculate es square average and um, calculate what is delta es uh, say by es and so on which is nothing but es square average minus es average square divided by um, es uh, and so there is a root over of that and so on so this gives you the fluctuation these all these have been uh, shown earlier uh, we are just showing you how to express the average quantity uh, again in uh, in terms of the uh, this distribution so nr is uh, average nr is nothing but 1 over zg summation over r and then there is a nr zf to the power nr exponential minus beta es which can be uh, simplified in the form of del del zf uh, log of a zg uh, and a beta and zf okay so this is the uh, the average number of particles and again one can calculate uh, the uh, relative fluctuation in the number of particles as this which is equal to uh, n r square average minus n r average square divided by n r average uh, and uh, n r square average you know how to calculate it uh, you take a, a double derivative with respect to the fugacity here uh, of the grand canonical partition function similarly you can also calculate uh, how to uh, get this e s square um, average and which is taking a double derivative with respect to beta ok. So, uh, these are uh, the average quantities and if you really want to know the number fluctuations that can be uh, obtained and uh, uh, which is simply equal to you know um, n r square average minus n r average square and this is equal to um, 1 over beta square uh, del del mu uh, let me write it in the next page delta n square this is equal to uh, 1 by beta square del del mu these are different ways of writing it but they mean the same thing uh, log of z g uh, you can also take a, a a derivative with respect to fugacity uh, and this is equal to 1 over beta and then there is a, a del n r which is an average number of particles uh, at a given t and v which is nothing but 1 over beta del n del mu t v ok and it is easy to understand that delta n square um, uh, this uh, fluctuation square is positive and um, again uh, this square of these uh, quantity uh, that sort of vanishes in the thermodynamic limit which gives you a justification of using uh, statistical mechanics reliably to a large uh, number of uh, copies of the system or when the, uh, the no, uh, number of data points are high it uh, makes sense to use statistical uh, analysis of the system ok. So, let us uh, go to another uh, thing and talk about uh, as an example of this uh, let us talk about a uh, quantity or rather let us talk about a system called as a photon gas. And why we are discussing it now we have not discussed uh, a photon gas earlier uh, even within classical mechanics we have only talked about classical ideal gas. So, a classical ideal gas as said several times the energy is given by p square over 2 m ok or you can write a p i square and then sum over i you can keep a m i as well just to uh, make this masses of the uh, particles to be different. Now, we have a different dispersion and let us just write it from one particle. Uh, we have a dispersion which is uh, like for the relativistic dispersion which is a p square c square plus some uh, m naught square c 4 where m naught is the 
the rest mass of the system and let me just write it as m here uh, just to uh, you know uh, bring various limits into the picture and this is uh, a relativistic dispersion. So, when you take the ultra relativistic limit, um, so this uh, m c square is of the order of uh, 0.5 um, MeV whereas, uh, this can be arbitrarily large, the first term can be arbitrarily large. So, E can be written as P C okay? and this is called as the ultra relativistic dispersion or this is the dispersion of the photon gas and it also makes sense because photons are not known to be massless particles. Okay? Uh, we will uh, talk about the rest mass when it comes right now I just left it as M. So, this is a, a dispersion that we uh, want to talk about. And how is it different than the classical ideal gas? It there is a p square dispersion where there is a linear in p dispersion. So, there is a linear dispersion uh, such as you know, uh, so p square looks like a parabola E versus p, and this uh, really looks like a sort of linear dispersion, and we have you know the dispersion is this when we just write it as something like this. Okay? So, we uh, so E versus P and the slope is given by C which is um, assumably the, the speed of light. Okay. So, uh, for a photon gas uh, first discuss the chemical potential of a photon gas is 0. So, that means that uh, all these uh, mu that we have been talking about uh, mu is equal to 0 identically equal to 0 for a photon gas and uh, then we can uh, basically there is no difference between the canonical and the grand canonical partition function because we are um, uh, we have put mu equal to 0. So, as if there is no need for that consideration of the mu. And um, uh, the reason for this is that if you keep uh, the uh, photon gas inside a container, so there is a photon gas, uh, there is a container there uh, made of anything and there is a photon gas. And if you remember Planck's theory, Planck just said that uh, these, uh, the container will exchange uh, photons with the surrounding uh, in uh, packets of h uh, nu or h cross omega. And uh, so, uh, you cannot keep the particle number to be constant if you uh, keep a photon gas inside a container. Okay? So, there is no way to keep photon number constant. So, if you uh, wish to you know relate to what we have done, so we have this system uh, and uh, there is this system A and there is A prime and then there is a A 0 and we have uh, always considered A 0 to be um, isolated. So, uh, even if A um, exchanges energy and the number of particles with A prime, A 0 is still insulated that is it does not um, talk to the surroundings, but here you cannot do that. So, uh, we really do not have a constraint n i equal to n sum over all i, this constraint is no longer there for the photon gas. Okay. So, if this constraint is not there, uh, then of course, uh, when you uh, try uh, minimizing this distribution just to remind you, 
that we minimize this distribution which is uh, sum over r n r uh, and wanted to find that at what value of n i uh, we have called it as n i star that this distribution peaks, but subjected to a condition that uh, sum over n i uh, equal to n and uh, this really needed us to have um, uh, Lagrange's undetermined multiplier which uh, is equal to mu or mu over k t. Okay. So, if this condition is not there then uh, mu is identically equal to 0 okay. and this condition is uh, uh, it becomes a defunct condition then we do not need a Lagrange's undetermined multiplier. So, mu equal to 0 for a photon gas. Let us uh, do some more analysis of the photon gas and uh, the dispersion of a photon gas is as I wrote earlier dispersion means E versus K relation or E versus P relation. So, this is equal to P and C. Okay. So, um, the rest mass energy is 0 uh, and in any case what is called as the ultra relativistic limit even when the mass is not equal to 0 you can arbitrarily um, accelerate it at very large energies when this 0 0.5 MeV uh, does not uh, compare with the P C term or the P square C square term. Okay. So, uh, we can write down the partition function as z is equal to v over h cube uh, and a minus infinity to plus infinity um, e to the power minus beta p c we uh, simply write it as p c because we have taken the minus infinity to plus infinity. So, the mod is taken care of and uh, we have a, a say for example, a d q p and this is whole to the power n because these are non-interacting photons. Okay. The photons are not interacting among themselves. So, we can uh, calculate the one particle partition function and raise it to the power n. Okay. So, z 1 can be written as a v over h cube and we try to perform this integral and uh, the easiest way is to do it uh, instead of doing a minus infinity to plus infinity if we convert it into a spherical integral that is uh, going to be easier and in that case you have a 0 to infinity and you have a exponential minus beta p c uh, and a p square d p. I hope you understand this, this is nothing but this beta e okay? and uh, which is the weighting factor and uh, then it is integrated over all p and um, the q integral has already been done and that is how we got a v and v to the power n for all n particles. Okay. So, uh, that uh, tells you because uh, uh, this dispersion does not depend upon the positional coordinates. So, the v can be easily integrated over and we land up with a, an integral like this and this integral uh, has a simple form I mean this is called as a gamma function integral. And uh, this is equal to the gamma function integral is equal to some 0 to infinity x to the power n e to the power minus alpha x dx this is equal to um, a gamma of n uh, this is written as gamma. So, gamma of n divided by alpha to the power n plus 1 and in general gamma of n is uh, defined as uh, this x to the power n minus 1 uh, 0 to infinity and um, uh, e to the power minus x dx. Okay. So, this is a gamma function integral and it can be easily performed and uh, one gets uh, uh, z 1 is equal to v over h cube uh, and we have a 8 pi and then we have a k t over c whole cube and uh, c is the of course, the speed of uh, light, speed of photons and you know light is nothing but the quanta of light is uh, photons. 
So, these are speed of light okay, or speed of photons. Okay. So, once we calculate z 1, we can raise it to the power n to get the full partition function and uh, once we get the full partition function, it is uh, easy to calculate various other quantities and that is what we are going to do here. So, we calculate the free energy. and free energy is equal to minus k t log z uh, which is uh, z uh, is equal to uh, z 1 to the power n. Okay, so, this is equal to minus n k t and uh, log of um, 8 pi k square v by h cube c cube n and we have a T cube. Okay. So, this is the free energy of the photon gas and we can also calculate the pressure which is equal to minus del F del V and this is at a given T and N um, and this is equal to a N K T um, D D V of log of V and this gives you n k t over v. Uh, remember we are using still this capital N which is the total number of photons. So, even if it exchanges uh, we still are talking about uh, I mean the container exchanges uh, the particles or the photons with the surrounding, but we are still talking about the total number of photons and this gives us a p v equal to n k t. This is an interesting result because uh, uh, same equation of state as non relativistic case. Okay. Um, however, there is something that is different that you will see here is uh, when we talk about the internal energy or rather this, um, this internal energy that is uh, given by um, u equal to uh, minus del del beta of log z we, which we have derived earlier it is equal to 3 n k t. And uh, this uh, is different than the non relativistic case. I will write it in short. Okay. Because this uh, was 3 n by 2 k t with only one harmonic degree of freedom which is uh, p square over 2 m. But uh, here uh, we have a relativistic dispersion which is p c and the internal energy is um, like what we get for the harmonic oscillator where there are two harmonic degrees of freedom. Here of course, uh, there is no uh, harmonic degree of freedom, but we get a uh, internal energy which is uh, which is twice of that in the relativistic case. And uh, similarly, we can uh, get other quantities such as enthalpy it is equal to u plus p v which is equal to 3 n k t. Uh, and P v is uh, derived earlier which is n k t and this is equal to uh, uh, this is 4 n k t uh, and this enthalpy is also different assumably uh, uh, is easy to understand that it is 3 by 2 for the non relativistic case and then you still have n k t. So, it is 1 half plus 1 which is 5 by 2 n k t where it is 4 n k t. Okay. So, uh, we do not see any harmonic degrees of freedom. So, uh, really the uh, defining equipartition theorem is a difficulty here, but what we still can do is that we can uh, do a virial. So, uh, virial of uh, photon gas. So, it is not really an equipartition theorem, but uh, we are just talking about a virial and how do we define a virial? So, we define it by this uh, symbol which is some calligraphic form of V and this is the expectation value or the average value of i equal to 1 to 3 and a p i 
q i dot ok and uh, uh, say this is given to be equal to 3 k t. However, we have derived it that uh, this independent of any um, kind of system that we are talking about this um, p i q i dot equal to 3 k t ok. And uh, if you take it over n particles n non interacting particles then it will be 3 n k t ok. So, now let us uh, calculate um, quote unquote the equipartition theorem. Uh, because the way we have defined equipartition theorem it should not be valid here, but we can still talk about average energy or the internal energy of the system uh, which uh, should be same as what the equipartition theorem finally gives ok. So, obtain uh, equipartition theorem. for the photon gas that is the question and in order to do that uh, we simply uh, take the virial and uh, you see the virial is actually nothing but uh, p uh, dot u uh, where u is the velocity which is equal to 3 k t. Now, I just remind you that uh, the magnitude of velocity in uh, relativistic mechanics is given by 1 minus u divided by um, u into this gamma factor where gamma is equal to uh, 1 by root over uh, 1 minus u square by c square. So, that tells us that p dot u is really a m 0 u. Now, I uh, go back to my notation of uh, the rest mass. So, this m 0 u and u divided by root over 1 minus u square by c square and this is nothing but equal to m 0 u square and um, root over of 1 minus u square by c square. So, what do you see inside the virial that is inside the average value? Uh, is nothing but equal to uh, p dot u which is nothing but equal to m 0 u square divided by 1 minus u square by c square m 0 being the rest mass of the system and u being the uh, the velocity uh, of the particle ok. And uh, so, that tells you the virial theorem gives Uh, this m 0 u square uh, just doing it for one particle 1 minus u square by c square this is equal to 3 k t or you can write it in a compact fashion as uh, uh, m 0 uh, u square um, gamma equal to 3 k t ok and gamma equal to 1 divided by 1 minus u square by c square. That is the uh, uh, velocity transformation formula that we have uh, used. Now, let us uh, look at the extreme relativistic limit that is E equal to p c. Okay. So, this is uh, m c square so, gamma m 0 u square. So, what I mean is that u tending to c. So, that gives you m c square uh, is equal to 3 k t where uh, m is equal to gamma m 0 uh, ok and uh, this gamma is uh, tending to uh, 1 because u uh, by c is uh, u tending to c u, u square by c square will be equal to 1. So, uh, this is I mean gamma tending to 1 means that inverse of this. So, this is equal to the, the total uh, energy uh, of the system in the extreme relativistic limit and the average value of that equal to 3 k t. So, this is the equipartition theorem that we have. Okay. And uh, for the uh, other limit that is the, the non relativistic limit, we have uh, this as half uh, I mean m naught uh, u square. 
this is equal to 3 by 2 k t this result we know and here of course uh, the only mass that remains is the this m 0 uh, which is different than m uh, it is not being renormalized by the gamma factor but this is uh, it is equal to 3 by 2 k t a known result uh, this is equipartition theorem and a known result. This is for relativistic case or ultra relativistic case and this for non relativistic case. Okay, so, um, and they correspond to different dispersion. Uh, we have a dispersion which is equal to linear in uh, P and we have a dispersion uh, in the second case as uh, uh, this is in uh, quadratic in P and this is how the difference arises. Okay. All right. Uh, so, let us uh, do an example which is uh, important in this uh, in the whole uh, the context that we have been talking about and uh, uh, the example is uh, that we are talking about entropy okay? and uh, uh, and you have been looking at this Lagrange's undetermined multiplier. So, this example will uh, try to you know make this thing clear that what exactly is this undetermined multiplier and uh, 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 the kind of expression that we are using for entropy is that a, a good expression. So, or rather how useful it is of course, it is uh, a correct expression. So, we have used it as uh, r and a p r log of p r this has been uh, used earlier. So, the the form of p r um, that which um, uh, makes you know the entropy uh, maximum is the one uh, that gives you a canonical distribution. Okay. So, I will tell you uh, the form of p p r that is uh, makes uh, the s maximum that is entropy maximum uh, with a mean energy E this follows a, a canonical distribution and we have uh, actually derived this, but this is uh, going to make uh, things farther clear that uh, this distribution which is nothing but a Boltzmann distribution which is exponential minus beta E r divided by sum over r exponential minus beta E r that P r really enters into this problem. Okay. And um, how do we actually see this? How do we uh, convince ourselves that this is the entropy? This uh, the P r in the entropy actually corresponds to the canonical uh, distribution and uh, this makes the entropy to be maximum and uh, with a mean energy E. Okay. So, uh, we have this constraint conditions as so we have a r p r equal to 1. So, this is one constraint condition and we also have uh, r um, you have a e r p r that is equal to e that is a second constraint condition when which is uh, equal to a constant and this is the second constraint condition. Okay. So, what we try to do is that we try to maximize the entropy okay. and uh, how do we do that? So, basically we take a delta of s which is uh, which gives you a uh, extremum of this and then there is a sum over r and then we have this k uh, p r log uh, p r um, plus a lambda 1 uh, e r p r uh, plus a lambda 2 p r and uh, this we shall put equal to 0. Okay. So, what we um, mean here is that we change change p r to p r plus 
delta p r and we see what happens to uh, the s that is the entropy of the system. Okay. Uh, so, we change the distribution a little uh, from uh, the its original uh, form uh, that is the Boltzmann distribution and we uh, try to see that what happens. So, uh, delta of s is equal to minus k uh, p s plus delta p s uh, log of or we write it as natural log. So, that is best to continue. So, this uh, what we mean is r. So, p r plus delta p r log of p r plus delta p r um, and a plus lambda 1 e r of p r plus delta p r uh, plus lambda 2 uh, p r plus delta p r. Okay. Now, you see uh, we can neglect this term inside the log because log makes a large number small. So, if you take a 10 to the power 6 and take a log uh, of that number base 10, uh, you just get a 6. So, uh, uh, um, a billion uh, becomes just a small number and hence inside the log if there is a small number that can be easily neglected. So, uh, this is equal to S 0 which is simply P r log P r plus sum over r and uh, then we have a minus k uh, log of P r uh, and uh, k plus a lambda uh, E r plus a lambda 2 and then delta P r and uh, this can be put equal to 0 okay, for um, extremizing it. Now, uh, S 0 is the one that is with this P r and this is the one that came due to change uh, in P r from P r to delta P r. Okay. So, uh, in order for this equation to be valid or uh, rather you know I mean uh, there are of course, other terms which are of the order of P r square which we neglect. Um, and uh, we simply put this uh, this coefficient uh, equal to 0. So, that gives you a p r this is equal to exponential uh, lambda 1 over k e r and plus lambda 2 over k minus 1. So, this is what we get by putting this uh, bracket equal to 0. So, this bracket equal to 0 okay? because S 0 is not equal to 0. So, for uh, minimizing that is uh, you know, uh, so actually if you write it uh, delta S this S 0 is just a constant. Okay? I mean, uh, so S 0 is the original uh, entropy of this system when you have not uh, done this P r to P r plus delta P r. The only thing that comes uh, to the first order in P r is this uh, this term uh, with this bracket into delta p r. So, we are just putting the coefficient of uh, this delta p r term equal to 0 and this is what we get by doing that. Uh, now, we have to determine delta 1 and delta 2, lambda 1 and lambda 2. This is uh, not delta 1 and delta 2, these are lambda 1 and lambda 2 that we want to calculate. Now, the two observations are important here. Since E r is unbounded, it is uh, necessary to have lambda 1 to be negative. Okay? And why is that? That is because uh, you can have uh, otherwise this uh, probability will diverge and in a general case E r uh, can uh, go from 0 to infinity or from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, uh, we have to keep this lambda 1 to be negative in order for these uh, P r to have physically meaningful values because it is anyway the probability, the probability cannot uh, uh, go to infinity for uh, E r to go to infinity. So, the lambda 1 needs to be negative. All right. 
so this we need because you have PR to be equal to 1, you have to satisfy this. So we write just to satisfy. All right. And of course, also, you know, ER, PR to converge. All right. So uh, if we write then uh, lambda 1 over k, which is this term uh, in the, the first term inside the square bracket that is inside the argument uh, or rather the argument of the exponential, uh, this you write it as minus beta understanding that beta is greater than 0. So, we get uh, 1 equal to sum over r uh, p r equal to e to the power lambda 2 uh, by k minus 1 uh, and then there is a r e to the power minus beta e r. Okay. So, this is nothing but e to the power lambda 2 by k. So, this is e to the power lambda 2 by k minus 1, this minus 1 is actually here okay. and this is there and then there is a z of beta. Okay. So, this is the this is what we get for uh, the equation by uh, extremizing the entropy and if you put it in uh, this equation number, uh, let us call it as equation number uh, 1, let us call it as equation number 1. If you put it there, uh, then uh, we get exactly what we get as the canonical distribution. So, we get a p r equal to exponential minus beta e r divided by uh, this z of beta which is the canonical partition function. So, which means that you know this distribution really extremizes or maximizes the entropy with a mean energy of um, E. Okay. Okay. So, uh, let us go on to another topic uh, rather a subtopic which in some sense has been told to you, uh, but however, uh, we'll do some small calculation and uh, uh, this calculation will uh, get us closer to this quantum mechanical case and which is something that we are going to start on the next day onwards. So, this topic is called the mixing of two gases. and which gives rise to what is called as the Gibbs paradox. Okay. So, uh, we just remind you, we have derived this earlier, the uh, entropy of an ideal monatomic gas. is S is equal to n k log of uh, V divided by H cube and we have a 4 pi m e divided by 3 n whole to the power 3 by 2 uh, to the power n plus 3 by 2 n k. Okay. This has been derived earlier for the ideal monatomic gas. Okay. Uh, there is a problem with this expression and which is what the main uh, reason for uh, this Gibbs paradox to occur okay? and we will uh, talk about that in just a while. Now, think about a thought experiment. Okay? A thought experiment is the experiment that you perform in your mind and uh, you uh, take uh, a container okay? and which has a removable partition. Okay? This is a partition you can remove it at your own will. And let us say that you have kept a gas A and a gas B which are distinct, which are different um, say nitrogen and helium or some other gas, I mean the two different gases. And we have this as N1 V1 uh, T and N2 V2 T uh, and uh, so they are maintained at the same temperature. Uh, but the number of particles and the volume of this are different and if you want uh, we can uh, move this partition little on one side so that you know that the volumes are 
different. So, the thought experiment is to remove the partition and let the gases mix. So, what will happen to the entropy is what we want to understand. Okay. So, we need to change uh, check uh, change in entropy. So, that is the question that we ask that what will happen. So, before mixing the entropy is just additive. So, entropy will add up and we write S i where i equal to 1, 2, this is equal to N i uh, k log of uh, V i by H cube. 2 m k t uh, by 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2 n i uh, k and so on. Okay. So, uh, for both the gases and uh, so this is uh, written a little uh, in a simpler form is k log of v i plus 3 by 2 n i uh, k log of uh, 2 you can have a m i here because they are two different gases 2 pi m i k t by h square uh, plus 1 uh, and so on. Um, so, many books will actually introduce a thermal de Broglie wavelength which is defined as uh, root over 2 pi m k t. Uh, you, you can see that this 2 pi m k t comes here and so on. So, uh, this uh, you can write it in terms of that as well, okay, this uh, thermal de Broglie wavelength. Uh, so, after mixing, okay, so these are uh, individual gases and they would be summed over and after mixing one has S f uh, this is equal to this i equal to 1 to 2. Uh, if you want you can write it initial uh, because this i and uh, this i initial they are not the same. So, S final is i equal to 1 to 2 and we have a n i uh, k log v. So, you remove the partition and uh, this thing becomes simply like uh, 1 uh, the partition is completely removed and you have a A plus B uh, gas and we have a N 1 plus N 2 number of particles V 1 plus V 2 volume and the temperature still remains as T. Okay. So, uh, so, this is equal to N i k log V plus a 3 by 2 uh, N i k uh, log of uh, 2 pi m i k t by h square plus 1 and that is a final entropy and uh, where v is equal to v 1 plus v 2. Okay. Okay, uh, so, uh, let us define the entropy of mixing. And the entropy of mixing is given as uh, S f minus S i which is equal to k uh, n 1 log of v by v 1 plus uh, n 2 log of v by v 2. Uh, so, this uh, expression becomes very simple if you um, sort of subtract the final uh, and the initial entropies of the system. So, we write S f S final minus S initial. Um, so, uh, as the total volume V is greater than V 1 and V 2, you can check that delta S is always 0 and this is what is expected that uh, you do some uh, 
do some process and uh, this process is uh, gives rise to a rise in entropy and uh, that is very clear because your log of um, uh, this v by v1 is actually uh, larger than uh, 1 this ratio both the ratios are larger than 1. So, m this uh, delta s should be greater than 0 ok. Now, uh, the second thought experiment. So, now this let me write it as first thought experiment first thought experiment. Okay. And in the next thought experiment or the second thought experiment what we do is that we have this gas which is the same gas A and A. Um, and uh, then you have uh, you know the, the masses of the particles are same and uh, you allow you remove the partition and let the gases mix and uh, we should get similar results because uh, we now have um, you know your delta s should still be greater than 0 and uh, the only difference that you have here is m i is equal to m f. So, same gas allowed to mix. So, both of them say nitrogen and then uh, this process should be completely reversible and in a reversible process the change in entropy should be 0 and uh, but this calculation gives the entropy to be non-zero and it is again positive and uh, there is a very simple form for that. So, let us write that in just a moment. So, we um, assume that m1 is equal to m2 equal to some m. So, the final entropy is equal to some n k log v, uh, v is again uh, v 1 plus v 2 and n is n 1 plus n 2. It is 3 by 2 n k um, and log of uh, 2 pi m uh, k t divided by h square plus 1 and uh, n is equal to n 1 plus n 2. Uh, v is equal to v1 plus v2 okay again delta s is greater than 0 okay uh, but which should not be so this is counterintuitive because you are mixing the same uh, gas okay so this process should be reversible so if you put back the partition there should be no change and this perfectly uh, reversible process but this calculation gives you uh, this thing to be the, the change in entropy to be equal to 0. So, what is this change in entropy? You can write it in a particularly simple fashion and this becomes equal to k n uh, i equal to 1 to 2 uh, x i log of x i where x 1 is equal to uh, n 1 divided by n 1 plus n 2 which is nothing but uh, v 1 equal to v 1 plus v 2 and this x 2 is equal to uh, it can be simplified this delta s which is the entropy of mixing can be simplified like this. So, it is v 2 divided by v 1 plus v 2. So, it can be written as this x i log x i and uh, therefore, both the terms. So, if you have n 1 equal to n 2 and uh, v 1 equal to v 2. So, x 1 equal to just for a special case uh, let us take n 1 and uh, n 1 equal to n 2 and v 1 equal to v 2. So, x 1 uh, equal to uh, x 1 equal to x 2 equal to half and that tells us that delta s which is equal to minus k n um, half log half uh, plus a half log half and that tells you that this is equal to nothing but n k log 2 ok. And uh, this should have been 0 because um, uh, this is the same gas of equal proportion equal volume uh, and you have first mixed them or you have uh, put a partition they would just give no difference in the, uh, the entropy of mixing should be uh, 0. But it is not true 
uh, at least as far as this calculation goes it gives you a result which is nk log 2 log 2 has a value say for example 0.693 and depends on uh, n is the number of particles and k is the Boltzmann constant. So, um, we need to resolve this and uh, so this is called a paradox because uh, the calculations give something and we are unable to find anything wrong in that uh, argument, but uh, physically if we try to understand the problem it definitely looks like that uh, for a completely reversible system uh, you get an entropy to be equal to uh, non-zero or greater than zero here. The problem lies with this uh, expression that we have started with, uh, this expression that we have started with. So, this expression let me write it with some color and this expression is actually wrong. Okay. And uh, let us see how this is wrong even though we have derived this from the first principles that is we have uh, calculated the number of microstates or we can we can go and uh, do it uh, using thermodynamics uh, we have done that and this really gave us this result that we got here. Uh, why it is wrong is that the expression for entropy disobeys that is it does not obey uh, extensiveness. And what is extensiveness? Extensiveness is that that when you uh, double the number of particles, double the volume uh, and uh, say double the energy, uh, the uh, everything that is you know uh, associated with the entropy, entropy will also double. What I mean is that if you have S uh, which is alpha n, alpha v and alpha e which are the intensive parameters. So, we double all of them and then we have this S n v e this is a relation that entropy should follow okay, where alpha is the factor just like I told uh, double. So, alpha is any factor. So, if you increase it 10 times we should have a factor of 10 uh, in front when we have uh, made these all these quantities n v and e 10 times larger. Okay. So, uh, that uh, would tell us that if we apply it to that equation of entropy that we had shown then alpha n, alpha v and alpha e uh, this gives you a alpha n uh, k and a log of uh, alpha uh, v by h cube uh, 4 pi uh, well 4 pi uh, m pi alpha e divided by uh, 3 alpha n uh, 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2 n alpha n k. Uh, just check whether everything is correct in this equation by comparing it with uh, this expression that you see here which I have marked as wrong. Um, and why it is wrong you can understand it here right here that uh, uh, if you do that uh, then this is uh, it becomes equal to um, you cannot write it rather equal to alpha s of n e v. So, the basic premise that the entropy is an extensive quantity is violated in this expression and there must be a fundamental reason uh, for uh, us to get the wrong result even if we have done everything correct starting with the thermodynamic derivation of this entropy. And um, that answer I will give just a little later, but uh, let me uh, show you that uh, this uh, uh, can be fixed, this paradox can be fixed. And how do we fix this paradox? That uh, we divide volume V. Um, inside the logarithm that is inside this logarithm that is log term ln term by n factorial. Okay. So, if you fix this then uh, Gibbs paradox is ad hocly fixed
So, ad hocly means it is not a right way of fixing something, there must be a nice first principle argument uh, leading to this uh, fixing of the paradox, but then we do not do that. What we do is uh, we simply inside the uh, logarithm term we uh, replace it or rather um, then uh, divide it by n factorial and then of course, use all these uh, Starling formula etcetera. Uh, in order to get this relation. So, this would fix that uh, that s of uh, s of alpha e alpha v alpha n is equal to s of e v n n alpha s of e v n n. Okay, so, this is obtained and then you know the extensiveness of entropy is is justified ok. All right. So, uh, now how do you uh, convince yourself this n factorial if you have done these problems of uh, permutation and combination then you have seen that often you know uh, you have to uh, divide all these uh, uh, this counting uh, by this n factorial and this is in the same spirit that you do it. But anyway it is a hand waving way of doing it. The real reason Uh, lies in indistinguishability of particles and this will bring us to quantum mechanics. And this indistinguishability is not a feature of classical mechanics, it has to come uh, from quantum mechanics. So, when we uh, deal with a gas uh, even if it is ideal gas non interacting we should uh, enforce this condition that uh, the particles are indistinguishable, they are not uh, labeled by 1, 2, 3, 4. We do not know uh, any, any particular label attached to a particle, neither they are colored so that we can say that it is a red particle or a blue particle and so on. So, this indistinguishability has to come from quantum physics and this leads us to the quantum stat mech. So, uh, we are closing the discussion for the classical stat make done so far. So, we have done thermodynamics, then we have done uh, statistical uh, classical statistical mechanics, we have seen these three distributions, we have done a number of example problems uh, and uh, now we uh, at the end uh, we give a very simple example of mixing of two gases and found that if these two gases are completely identical then the change in entropy has to vanish which it is not. So, uh, which means that uh, we have made a mistake somewhere and the mistake is deep rooted we need to be um, considerate to uh, treat these particles as indistinguishable particles. And this gives rise to two kinds of particles uh, that would uh, you know arise called as the bosons and fermions depending on the statistics they follow ok. So, this exchange statistics is something that we need to understand and uh, there are in fact even more than this there are uh, particles which follow neither boson st uh, Bose statistics or Fermi statistics and uh, they are also important and becoming more and more relevant in the study of uh, condensed matter physics and, and other subjects. So, we will stop here and carry on with uh, introduction of quantum mechanical statistics from uh, next class onwards. Thank you.